There's my Texan, Tim McGraw in the flesh. I went skydiving, I went. Yeah. What is Dude, your what, they just bring back Chris Brown, man. Who is this? <laughs> oh, God. Just give me R&B, man. God I'll tell you it. one thing, Tim. I'll tell you one thing country men don't do is beat their women. So there you go. <laughs> 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 okay, that's the hardest I've ever a lot. Dude, I just laughed out. <laughs> Hey, no Not that I'm laughing at that, beat but I woman. think they've been known to do that quite frequently. <laughs> They'll just beat their horse, like Bow said. They just beat the horse, yeah. They'll beat something, man, I'm telling yeah. you. Not that we condone this. Yeah. <laughs> you, know what, you know what it is, Joe, is like, here's the thing, man. I, I love how, dude, a society reads all these people magazine and beat their meat. <laughs> Everybody was thinking about it, Bow, but you're neck deep in a Hennessy right now. <laughs> Dude, I was just thinking, I was like, um, you know, everybody reads these people magazines, man, and everybody thinks that they're friends with all these guys. I'm like, dude, I don't want to know what Chris Brown does behind closed doors. Just, he makes a cool song, whatever, dude. I'll, I'll blast Right, him. exactly, yeah. Like, if I wanted to, like, sneak peek into Chris Brown's life, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't be doing it because I like his music. Right, dude? I'm like, like, I'm like, all these, it's weird though, man, because we live in a society where if you actually think about it, celebrities are kind of like modern day gladiators, right? Like, they're the spectacle real. of attention. And That's we pretend true, yeah. like we know these people. And I'm like, dude, I don't care who's cheating on who and doing what behind closed doors yeah. just you're good at making music man that's I'll a country it, song by the way face value that's a country song by the way what's that which one who's cheating on who who's cheating on who who's being yeah, who that yeah who's cheating nice on who? who's who's being true uh who don't even care anymore Joe has a Patreon, guys, for those who don't know, to fund his music career. Um, <laughs> man, oh my God, what is the name of that song? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, sorry. Okay, what is your criteria in your scanner to look for low hanging fruit plays tosh has a really good one for this so i'll take i'll let you take that away tosh yeah What's man a, here's the criteria, the criteria in the scanner dude you don't need scanner. a scanner join mic and we provide that list every single day at the end of the day on what you should watch for tomorrow so <laughs> or if you have a free scanner like think or swim what yeah, would you, you do put that. in there what would you what because you say what you like to see like what a hundred thousand shares pre-market well here's the thing here's the thing Something for a true low lines. hanger man i like a stock under five dollars at least under $7. Mm -hmm, I like it mm -hmm. to get destroyed the day before and with at least 100,000 volume on day two. And that would showcase a amazing, you know, low hanging fruit. If it meets those criteria, not a micro float, ideally 5 yeah. million plus in the float. And then it's jumping into outer lines on a relief pop and then boom. Boom, there you go. Beat the horse, man. That's it. Yep. You really don't use a scanner though. Uh, oh, oh, dude, yeah. hell yeah. Alex into the, here, let me. Here, I got it. Get, dude, we're bringing on the we're bringing on the AT09, baby. Uh, make analyst special guest today, guys. We're bringing Alex on. It's about to get real. Yo, do you hear me? Yo, yo, yo. Yo. Is that is that working? Can everyone hear me? Alex, what's up, brother? It is working. Can Let you hear us? If I can hear you guys, I just want to okay, make sure. Yeah, we got you. Me. Welcome to the radio show, man. Yeah. Give me a second. So listen, we're going to talk about forex signals. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, so so the reason why I wanted to come on, man, is because like you guys seem like you're having all the fun every single week, man. I'm over here just watching and like if I see Bow trading this fucking hurts. It's going to make me want to trade it. So I have to fucking control myself. Uh -huh. so my way of controlling myself. So wait, yeah. Alex, what you're saying is we gave you so much FOMO, you actually had to pull the trigger to come on the show. <laughs> That's literally exactly what happened. Dude, welcome <laughs> to the FOMO train, baby. Yeah. Where the hell am I, bro? What is this? Like, I feel like I'm at a radio show or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's our new podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do it, man. Let's let's answer some questions. So if you guys have questions. questions, let's take it, guys. Guys, what do you got YouTube for us? What do you got? People, YouTube people watching, make sure you ask questions. MIC people ask questions. Yeah, I got the YouTube I'm here, as well. I'm so here we'll to answer any out. question anyone has about the a new accelerator course. If you have questions before you look to purchase it, make sure you ask me. Um, I'm happy to field those. And I'm just here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hey guys, I thought this was Tosh my clever. Like, what the hell? Tosh is like Joe Rogan. He's like, <laughs> he's, he's the guy that brings everyone in. 
I'm Tosh the guy that just the brings face. everyone in, man. Yeah, ta- all the chicks are like, oh, my God, he's so beautiful. And then <laughs> me and Alex are just the one that talks. Yeah, you got Joe, a Texan that loves to grill, and then you have me, an <laughs> Armenian terrorist-looking guy. <laughs> Armenian terrorist. <laughs> Dude, I, I actually I, look I, better <laughs> without my beard, believe it or not. A lot of people are giving me a lot of compliments. Uh, but Dude, you're looking good. Beard. Something about the so beard. Like. We have a question that says, explain the tab process and how members can get a tab. Maybe we weren't very clear on that. Yeah, so in the I, beginning. I, yeah, I wasn't mean, around. I'm sorry. Yeah. So the p- tab process is this. So the reason why the tab program started is because me and Bao were trading in private for a couple of years, man. We, did, we didn't really give a shit about showing off. We don't care about all these egotistical guys on Twitter pretending to make money. We were just sitting there grinding it out every single day. And what we learned about each other was that, you know, whenever I had a trade idea or whenever Bao had a trade idea, we would always confirm with each other first just to see what the other was thinking about. And it turns out that with more times and more times of doing this, we realized that if me and Bao both agree on a trade, chances are that's a fucking A plus slam dunk. But if one of us disagrees or one of us is hesitant, that gave us the confirmation that, okay, Maybe I'll just size down here. So the tab program was created on accident because it kind of helped us and we knew that that was the missing link. So the way that the tab program works is that you go into the trading accountability channel, uh, you say that you need a tab and then the tab manager uh, messages you back a form that you could fill out with your trading experience, long or short bias, uh, maybe some goals of trading. And with that, we match you into our database of you know 1,300 traders to find someone that is going to fit your, that's going to be the missing puzzle piece that Bao was talking about in today's Instagram live. So if you need a tab, 100% you should get one. Just message in the trading accountability buddy uh, channel or right DM here, buddy, uh, directly. Awesome. Uh, next question. What type of stop losses do you guys use? We use um, market stops. Market hard stop. 100%. Yep. It has to be it has to be market stop because if you have a limit stop on something like GRNQ at like I don't know 250, chances are if it goes past 250, it might go 260, 270, 280 and all of a sudden you're not stopped out. Yeah, cuz so there's a video in the yep. in the in the library of me trading RKDA back when RKDA did the major zombie move. And the mistake I made was actually I mistakenly placed a limit stop where I thought I placed a market stop. So go watch that video and you can see how terribly fucking wrong it goes. Well, and here's what happens, All guys. Live so, recorded. Dude, this is what Alex was saying, guys. When you get a shoot up candle like this, if you have a limit stop at 250, this is going to shoot up. It's going to be so quick. It's not going to trigger. This would have to come down to 250 again. Look what it never did. It never touched 250. So you'd still be in this. That's why you need a market yeah. hard. Yeah, if it blows right by it and this there's candle. no ask or bid and it's just illiquid, your your stop isn't going to get executed because it just blows past you. Yeah, this candle is going to just put a middle yeah. finger to your stop, dude. Dude, yeah. if you want out, the, bro, the 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 it it's get the fuck out. Who cares at what price you get out when it breaks your stop loss? Get out. Yes. Who gives correct. a shit about three, five, ten cents of slippage? Get out. Like, that three five cents might actually dude, cost you fifty cents on the wrong exactly. trade. Exactly. Yeah. You you're like, oh, I only want to get out if it breaks here, and then I'll get out. You know, within five cents of there, and if it don't happen, yeah, just like Alex said, it goes up another fifty cents, and you're like, fucking hell, I wish I would have just yeah. took ten. Well, and the hey, problem Tosh, is, it's, it's like, favor? Tosh, could you go to the video library and show everyone how to use the search bar for a question like stops or zombie rules? Yeah, sure, or, man. Um, um, hold like on that, one second. Case. While he's pulling that up, uh, is Alex's? Oh my God! Is right Alex's here, like, watch what's, in the video? Well, Alex, what do you think those? the main one search is? Like, what do you think I should type in? Like, death line? Maybe, maybe you could even type in stop, like, because a lot of people have questions about stop losses. So if you type in the word stop, you're gonna see every single video that has to do with a stop loss that talks about stop losses that talks about anything that has to do. So pages, uh, five pages, pages of that. Pages. Also, also in there, if you go back to videos. At the very top right there on all categories, just click all categories, there is an entire list of all the categories. So if you go to hard stops that in the H's, that's right up yeah, there. Click hard stops. This Search. is every single video that we've talked about a hard stop. Every single one. Dude, how sick is that? 
Yep. If you want to learn limit orders, market orders, if you want to learn the difference between range stops, everything else, if you want to see what we talk about as far as indicators, max loss rules, literally everything is cataloged right there. And, it's, and it pertains exactly to what we teach in the accelerator course. So yes. that accelerator course is designed around the video library. It took 800 something videos. I've watched, I've seen all 800 videos over time. Okay, I didn't watch them all at once. I watched them as they came out because I've been here like a year and a half now. Holy shit, it's almost two years. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, isn't that Bro, insane? What the fuck is going on? My I feel God. like we've been doing this for 15 I'm almost years. <laughs> 30 and I've almost been here two years. Oh, shit. Wow. Okay, so anyway. We, we condensed and built everything around that. So the layout in that course is totally designed to be able to help you later walk through the video library to then expand your knowledge even further. So as a new trader coming in, it's extremely beneficial to have that accelerator course because then you're not a lost puppy in a sea of videos. You're That's not exactly trying, right. you're, you have a game plan. You have a plan of attack. You now have a course syllabus to your education. Yep. Uh, is there a drop down for taxes for trading? Yes. So we there? have, we have partnered with a guy named Brian Rivera, who is a CPA and a fucking kick-ass long, uh, large cap trader. Right here. Uh, so Brian actually specializes in taxes for traders, right? So, for most that don't know, uh, unless your accountant CPA knows what the hell he or she is doing, you might not be able to deduct locate fees. You might not be able to deduct uh, platform fees. You may not be able to deduct MIC. You may not be able to deduct the accelerator course. So by having someone that is in the industry and that knows all of these tips and tricks, it kind of gives you the one up as well. So, I mean, we offer tax planning for members. You know, Brian helps a lot of people in MIC for free, but there's certain things that, you know, require a lot of time and effort. And that's all additional for later. But if you have any questions, Brian is always around. He can help you. And, you know, he helped us with our tax planning at the start of MIC. Brian's a man. Oh, my God. Alex, how do we access your live trades? Join my4xalerts.org. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to have some fun. <laughs> Hey, look, your All limit right. stop would have well, actually gotten triggered finally. <laughs> yeah, finally, uh, after it hit 280 and you blew your account. <laughs> yeah, my limit stop finally came back. Yeah. Oh, you know, your broker limited you out up here at 275. Tom Diesel mentioned that he uses an offshore broker. Can you advise where they can where they also offer paper trading for a person outside of US or Canada? So um yeah. I, Trade Zero has paper trading um, alongside their normal platform. So you can, you can paper trade there. You can paper trade using TC2000. Um, and I want to say there's a way that you can get access to Thinkorswim. There's like a, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really educated on that. So I'm not going to really even go. Yeah, I'm not it. sure on that either. I don't know. There, there used to be, it used to be accessible to like everyone. And then they went to like only U S and Canada. And then now I'm still seeing some like European guys coming in as well. This is also you, another one guys, just real time simulator on dostrader.com. I think, yeah, even international, right? It's just a simulator. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could go to the real time simulator with DOS trader and you don't, it doesn't matter if you're, you're fucking alien from another. Yeah, yeah seriously. You can get access. Yeah, and you guys are going to have to pay monthly for that, you know, um, which that doesn't have to do with us guys. So just, you know, handle that on your own. But um, I mean, this is great. You know, if you transition to Cobra or something and you do click DOS, which you will use for your professional brokerage and not a simulator, then you can just gravitate towards after practicing on it every single day. So that's wonderful. Dude, look at MRSA. Hey, what was that? What was that stock you were looking at a minute ago? It's like a cheapie. It's like a dollar or something. Is that it? No. You talking about this, Joe? No, there was another one you Hertz? had up a minute ago. Hurts. That's it. Hurts. Hurts. Hurts your butthole. Bankruptcy. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, question is: If you have a 150 line, would you put a market stop at 151, or what amount of slippage would you use? 
we all have different answers for this. Alex, yeah. you want to go first? Uh, I mean, it, it really just depends, man. It really just depends. Like it's, you, you don't want to stop out at the places that everyone else is stopping out at. I like heard. For, for example, if you look at something like Hertz, like 150 is obviously the half dollar mark. Obviously it's something that is very uh, psychological, right? So a lot of people uh, probably have their stops at 150. What I like to do is I like to have them in weird places, 157. 154 like some some weird numbers that like people don't really talk about and i leave enough room in the trade in my trade plan to be able to get to those numbers yo bear what's up um i'm the same i will i'm like alex i will almost every single time if i'm stopping out at like a high a day or a pre-market high a day i'm gonna give it five cents at minimum man because these are herd prices i mean look what look what bow just said dude this is where most people are stopping out guys so and that might only be half my position because here's the thing if i give it five per, five cents over and in 155 then if it stuffs hard with a candle like this dude i'm throwing that i'm throwing it back on i'm throwing that half that i took off so, you know, there's herd prices where the stopouts are and, you know, I might want to get back in if it stuff's hard. For real. Yeah. For me, that's kind of why I went with my own little personal dollar a share rule. So like if I like the dollar 50 line and I'm like, all right, cool. If I just absolutely get fucked and I short at a dollar 50 and it runs a dollar against me just in some weird halt shit, I'm going to be okay. So like if I take a thousand shares at a dollar 50, I'm watching it react to the dollar fifty line, and I'm looking for those candle wicks above or below the line that confirm it. And then I'm looking for the volume to slam back down, like Tosh was just talking about there. And then, and then, boom! I'll jump in, and then I have a real hard stop. And me, I kind of like three to five cents above the line. I'm like, okay, if it breaks one fifty five with volume, then maybe I'm just going to be done with it. I mean, but it's it, going into the trade knowing exactly the to the penny what my stop loss is going to be fuck that's rare that's rare for me it's always on the fly yeah i'll never do it something. at 150 man i'll never do it like at yeah the exact i'm not going to be 151 i made that mistake one time back when nico was here and i stopped out and i looked at nico's chart and fucking nico took all of my covers <laughs> and i was like you dick was, and he goes dude it was so psychological and i was like okay thanks i've learned my lesson all right <laughs> yep joe's stopping out at 150 151 152 joe, bro nico's yeah like, 151 was like scale <laughs> love it dude i'm like oh kill me now <laughs> Let's see if there's any other questions. You see any on YouTube, Joe? Uh, yeah. So what percentage of your account do you risk per trade? We actually go over that in the accelerator course. We, me and Alex put together a risk method that uh, Alex uses. Again, this is not investment advice. We're simply just educating on you, educating you on what a successful trader uses and you can adapt however you want to. So uh, each of that, the percentage of account that we all use, I think is, 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 it's all relative. Um, it's all relative, man. Yeah. What we use a max loss sometimes based on account size, sometimes based on the trade. So, yep. I mean, to not go extremely in detail on that. Um, and I'm pretty I'm sure Joe, you hours. have a video on this on trading basics as well. I think you have a risk calculator yep. that you kind yep. of created for everyone. Yep. Uh, Alex, from the past four months, I am a profitable trader and I'm usually short selling. However, somewhere in my mind, I am thinking to join your course on the other side. I am thinking, why should I join when I'm already profitable? Can you help me or guide me here? Oh, dude, yeah. This is Tasha's favorite answer. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's Tasha's like, well, here's question. the thing. Here's the thing. I get 20 texts a day, man, on people saying, hey, you know, Tosh, I may make a little money already. I may be consistent. Why should I join MIC? 
bro, do you want to keep the money? It's like, look, it's, it's pretty easy to make money, man. But when you have a community behind you, when you have Alex's watch list behind you every day, you have Bao's scans, Bao's commentary, your tab partner in your ear, bro, you are literally, a trader is a toolbox, man. You are going to have a drill. You're going to have a screwdriver. You're going to have a flat. You're going to have everything you need to build that house, man. So you might be getting lucky. If you're not getting lucky and you have a system down, why not just enforce it and make sure that you're holding held accountable with positivity and a supporting community every single day? Like, dude, I can't rant more on this than any other question because I don't care how consistent a trader is without a community. Dude, do you know how much fun it is and just to instill these good habits and to make sure you're on the right track every single day? Dude, the guys that trade alone they think it's a lottery ticket. Usually the usual case is it's a lottery ticket. I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to get rich in a year. Then I'm going to retire, bro. It's a daily grind for even the traders like Alex who can pull a hundred K day. We show up, we have fun together and we make our money together every single day while following a certain set of rules. And that's how we maintain discipline. That's how we maintain patience is because we're with the community and because we're keeping each other. And I learned from others as well, man. I learned from others as well. The only reason yes. I, able to trade the way that I am is because I've taken lessons from traders who are better than me and more experienced than me and molded their process into my own. So even though I've been doing this shit, man, like six years, over six years, uh, here comes someone like Faye that has only been here for four months that is helping me improve my discipline. You know, I thought I had it down, but I still have so much work to do guys. And that's the entire point. When you join a community of real traders that are actually eat, sleep, breathing, trading um your weaknesses you will find that members in the community your weaknesses are their strengths you reach out to them you see how you guys can help each other how you yeah. can better each other together and that is something that is not easily accessible in this world because all these guys are trying to pump and dump sell you signals do all this and that so it's a different it's a different way that we run things here well, and Alex, let me, let me add this and say, man, I, dude, I am pleasantly surprised every single week on the fact that I'm gravitating even a little bit more towards big caps because I have things like Joe Kelly webinars. Dude, I've been trading seven years on small caps. Guess what? When the market slows down in small caps, if I've been networking with big cap traders, which is not my niche, dude, I'm going to be better and I'm going to have more accessible plays given any frame of, of market, given any frame, you know, time frame, dude, you are just going to have opportunities to the utmost extent when you're a part of something like MIC. And for anybody that is looking in at MIC and you're like, dude, I, all you guys are going to teach me how to trade. No, dude, we're going to be that fun factor that you don't have. Trading's lonely, bro. We're going to, when you're bored in a trade or you want something to work out and you want something to take your attention, go into after hours, dude, you're going to have the time of your life. Like it's not just to learn how to trade. That's the main thing, but dude, you're going to get a family. Like 100%. you're, you're going to get an ecosystem, man. Also to add to that, is the strategy that's taught in the accelerator is a scalable strategy that applies to almost any market. It's not a simple strategy that is just tailored to one area. Okay. Sure. This exact, this same strategy that we teach in the accelerator, I apply that to large caps and I use that in large caps. Could somebody else apply it to futures? Probably. It's all based on charts and charts look all the same next to add to that is if you have that little tickle in the back of your mind that you think you want to join or maybe you want to check out the course or maybe what it is always remember this always remember this someone is always out there working harder than you so you have to try to continue to work harder than they are and guess Education what they're at mic the only way Dude, they're at MIC working harder. <laughs> <laughs> the, does it work in Forex? I don't fucking know. I don't care. <laughs> it works in shoe flipping on eBay. I'll tell you what. I bet I could go to Forex with this strategy and do it better than these fucking little YouTubers that are 15 years old. That dude, making 30 fucking pips on a day, bro. What the fuck is a pip, dude? Bro, dude. I'm... Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> In your videos, I hear about better average while trading. Can you under, can you help me understand what exactly is the use of 
average average shares trading i'm not sure what's that question i understand in your videos i hear about better average while trading can you help me understand oh exactly scaling what is scaling your positions of average average shares trading no i, mean, I think what he's talking about joe is getting in at one one bullet or scaling a position oh okay I mean, you, you can take that one if you want. Yeah, I mean, here's the I, thing. I'm fucking I, lost on that question. Well, here's the <laughs> thing, man. I think so it's sorry. pertaining to scaling. <laughs> I think it is. But here's the thing, man. If Bao wants to scale a pop on G, R, and Q right now, dude, he may throw a little bit at 250 up to 275. That's scaling. If he does one pop shot at 250 and, you know, like say 1,000 shares is the max position, right? If he throws all 1,000 at 250, he's not going to get his average up if he doesn't add into up to 275 or 280 with a stop above high of day. He's getting his average up by breaking up the shares. And I'm just using this for an example. Val might be using way more size. But say he uses 500 at 250 and 500 at 270, he's going to have a 260 average. You see what I'm saying? It's getting your average up. So I'm not a big advocate of trading with a one pop shot. Like if it reaches 250 or 260, I'll throw on the mother load. I want to get a piece the whole way up just in case it goes to 250 and it crumbles, you know, or 260 yep. and it crumbles before waiting just for the 277. Yep. And Bao is probably the master of scaling and having the best average. I yes. think one time I had a better average than Bao and I was like, holy Jesus, I'm going to frame this shit. Joe, oh you were, dude, God. five years ago, bro, you're just nice. <laughs> five years ago, I was trading um, and I wasn't talking about an Alex back then. I was just kind of following them on Twitter. We had kind of talked like in PMs, like, hey, dude, thank you for the trading fish. Thank you for the advice. You're really helping me indirectly. But dude, I remember one day I top tick something where Bow and Alex were competing for top tick bills above them. And I was like, I literally thought I was Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is like, whoo. And then I gave it back at the end of the day on Zombie Hour. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> also, Tosh. but I was like, for one moment in my life, I was like, I'm freaking beast. <laughs> I was gonna say, Tosh. Also, go again to the video library search bar and type yeah, in the word scaling, so that people see like how to yep. kind of access some of these videos. Because again, Dude, hell yeah, a lot yeah, of people ask like a lot of similar questions, and I and feel like they don't is know how to use the resources that we Guys, have. Guys, look at how simple yeah. this is, man. So scaling, right? Yeah, scaling. Wait, scaling. You could just even type it in. I could do yep. that. Scaling, even if there, go to there, doesn't matter. Yep. But look it up, guys, and you are going to have tons. Look at right there. There's two, there's two of Bow's recaps. There's four James Friedlander videos. Let's go Those to the next page. From 11 Bao, pages. Are, I mean, Bow is the master of scaling. He is literally the master of scaling. We all learn from him. Alex learned from him. I learned from him. Tosh learned from him. We fucking all learned how to scale bait because of Bao. For He's years, I studied every chart Bao posted on Twitter before MIC for years, dude. Yep. And then when I finally, you know, Bao became a dear, dear friend of mine and a brother. But dude, outside that, I scoured his Twitter every single day took the screenshots of the charts, took his bills, tried to put it together in my head. And I learned scaling through that, dude. I really did. Yep. What is an ideal minimum amount to start trading for new traders? I'm just going to make this super simple for you. A $2,000 account gives you margin. If you're in the U.S., outside of the U.S., I have no idea what you're allowed to use margin to get a margin, what it takes to get a margin account. To be honest with you, you don't even need an account to learn how to trade. You don't even need an account, all right? Before I ever learn engineering, I have to go to school and learn an entire level of, like an entire college level education before I can ever go to Bell Helicopter, before I could ever go to Lockheed Martin and get a job as an engineer if there was electrical, mechanical, nuclear, chemical, whatever it is, I would have to go get an education. You don't need a trading account in order to learn how to trade. Do I need an account? No, I just go to the DOS simulator and pay a hundred bucks a month to get an unlimited amount of buying power to be able to practice after I learn. Joe, There's no let me, need to have an amount. Of Joe, money. I have to interject on this dude. Oh, because okay. I'm, I'm probably like, I'm like the ambassador for the new trader, right? Like the guys coming into MIC and they're asking me all the really basic questions, which is fine. That's what I'm here for. But guys, you have to understand 
You do not come into trading, never traded a day in your life, don't know what a buy and sell is, and try to risk your money. Yep. Dude, invest in your education. I get a lot of people that ask me, Tosh, I have $5,000 to my name. What do I do? I just made $300 in Robinhood. I say, close the account, wire it out, get an MIC membership, go on a paper account and learn. Invest in your education because, dude, you will turn that $5,000 account into $500 tomorrow. Go take when your you money and buy a what fucking you're doing. savings bond. And dude, it'll pay you I more swear. while you learn. Like... <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yes, dude. <laughs> investing in your education is going to get you where you need to go 1,000 times quicker than you trying to turn your two or $5,000 account into a million dollars, dude. Yeah. You need or the course. You need to be rims. surrounded by this professional level. Go buy some rims for a Honda Accord and flip them like Alex <laughs> did. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, that's true, guys. How can you expect to be in a game filled with sharks when you are a guppy? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense. You have to be able, if you are, if I want to be a doctor tomorrow, I think they're going to fucking let me do knee surgery tomorrow. They're going to make me go to school for 10 years before I even operate on a dead body or whatever it is. Dude, seriously. Dude, one of these guys so it took me nine years to become an engineer. It took him nine years to become an engineer and people want to be a successful trader in nine days. Nine minutes, nine seconds. All right, I've subscribed. Bro, don't put the spoiler and the good rims on the Honda Accord. <laughs> don't learn how to trade, and then maybe you can get a Ferrari one day. The point is, man, is just learn, dude. Just invest in your education, bro. Yep. All right, how important is – oh, wait. I'll cover – okay, I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. How important is VWAP when you are trading? VWAP is very important and moving on yeah so let me let me kind of explain how I, <laughs> just so, kidding. <laughs> so um i use vwap as a way of kind of keeping myself safe right so we talk a lot about the front side of the move and the back side of the move and what i've learned is a really good indicator to help you with sizing is if you are short biased and the stock is above vwap you have no reason to size in but if you are short bias and the stock is under VWAP, that gives you an edge. That gives you more probability of it going lower, which means that you have the ability to size in. So for me, I have a 30% rule that says if a stock is trading above VWAP, I'm only allowed to use 30% of my size. By doing this, I keep myself safe in case some freak accident like GRNQ happens, right? Where I am able to stop out with an extremely small loss because I have extremely small size. But when it does turn, when it does break, when we do come to tomorrow and it is under view app, that gives me the ability to say, you know what? It's time to size in. Yep. It's called the 30% rule, guys. Alex created it with, uh, Alex, was it Brett Steenbarger? Yeah. Brett helped me with that a lot. He helped Dude. me with, exactly. So again, like think about it. I had to get out of my comfort zone, talk to someone who is more experienced than me, that is older than me, that has seen this before to help me improve my trading process. And now that has yielded to more profits in the future. So we are always learning, always improving from others. Yeah, straight from the horse's mouth, dude. Brett is like an industry legend mentor coach, dude. Like if Alex is listening to him and he's saying do a 30 to 70% rule, bro, you better bet your ass we're going to do that. Yep. yep. And that's because we looked back at the stats. We looked at the numbers. We said, hey, this is what's happening. So let's create a rule process, a guardrail, a barrier to help with this. Yes. Um, I'll say it the way I, you know, I, I like VWAP. I really like it when I'm trading, but guys, honestly, it, it, the lines are what you want to pay attention to. VWAP can be a gravitational field. So you want to pay attention to, especially things like zombie hour and stuff. And like Alex said, with the sizing, but also, you know, put a lot of importance into the lines, man. But yes, VWAP is important and it's the only technical indicator that we actually keep on our charts. We're not keeping Bollinger Bands. We're not keeping RSI. VWAP's the universal indicator that we would always recommend, but that's it. Volume, lines, and, and VWAP. That's, that's all you need. Is a retest of VWAP after, I'm sorry. Is a retest of VWAP from underneath always a short, or is there a criteria like day one death candles under VWAP retest, or what criteria for longing off of VWAP? Should we bring Harry Haas on? <laughs> nah. Uh, Alex, Austin's I know done like four webinars on that. Yeah, seriously. 
Um, I mean, I'll answer it the way I, I will, but like in the first hour, I am paying attention to one thing and that's my shorts that are under VWAP or backside. If something like this happens, guys, at 1030 around this time, it is doing a big shoot up candle, kind of like a teleport through VWAP. I am no longer short bias and I am looking, if I did long, I don't really long, but if I was longing still, I would be looking for a dip back down to VWAP to launch off and get a nice move like a VWAP reclaim. But dude, I, I'm, not, I'm not messing with a short that especially going into zombie hour that is, is like rampaging near VWAP or going through it and coming back. I'm just not. On elevated volume specifically. Yep. Does someone from MIC provide an aftermarket feedback after the market closes, like some sort of watch list or video recap? Uh, that's usually uh, the webinars. You know, we, we, uh, we do a webinar, I think, probably every day almost besides Fridays. There's a yeah, there's so some let me kind, kind of, of webinar or IG Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, everyone, let me mention that again so everyone knows. So every Monday at 11 a.m., I do a YouTube Live recapping my trades. Every Tuesday at 11 a.m., Bao does an Instagram live talking about his trades, talking about psychology, talking and bringing members on. And then Joe does a large cap webinar at 7. Every Wednesday, we have this webinar. Every Thursday, we have Austin's strategy webinar, which everyone needs to attend. Uh, Fridays are rest day, kind of like a, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Maybe a live trading video, maybe a different video. It, it's kind of like a crapshoot. Saturday, we have the Q&A. Uh, it's a one-hour Q&A in the weekend mentoring section. Uh, basically, it's like a speed dating of questions. And then Sunday, we all prep together, put videos that we're looking to watch, videos that kind of are going to get us ready for the week, and then the whole process repeats. Rinse and repeat. We're structured, man. We're very structured each week. For those of you asking if we're going to comment on other chat room services, we will not comment on other chat room services. We can only comment as to what MIC provides. That's why you're here watching MIC content. Do we keep it classy, man. We're not here to hurt anybody. We're not here to belittle, but we are here to teach you correctly. So if you want to join MIC and trust us, you're in good hands and we're going to show you why that's why we do these webinars. So you guys can get a day in the life of MIC, see how we do our inner workings and kind of like what we focus on, but we are not here to call out, uh, furus by name, just their tactics. Yep. When, if ever, do you use market orders? How can you, how can you get into trades that are moving quickly in your direction without them? Uh, can you repeat the question, Joe? Sorry. When, if ever, do you use market orders? Um, only for stops. Okay. And how can you get into trades that are moving, moving quickly in your direction without them? Let's say on a first red day that's tanking under red and you're not in. What's your thought? Well, I set a limit order then. Boom. There you go. And to get good at that, guys, it's going to take a little time, man. You're not going to be Sonic the Hedgehog in your first week, man. It took... I'm really fast these days. I can trade four stocks at one time using only limit orders. But let me tell let me tell you guys a trick, right? So for the people watching that are already here, I assume that these are the guys and girls that want to learn the most. So let me tell you my trick of how I'm so fast. So if you look at the DOS level two, um, if you click the numbers in the bid or you click the numbers in the ask, it'll automatically fill uh, the box with the price, right? So what I do is I pre type in my order, let's say 1,000 shares. So I type in the 1,000 shares as soon as like I open up the stock, but I don't trade it. As soon as I want to enter, either on the bid or the ask, I click the bid, I click the ask, I click short or buy. That way I don't waste one or two seconds typing up the stock. The way that Bao does it is he has two or three level twos open with different prices and different share sizes. And he skips a step of even clicking the price button. He just clicks the short button. So what I do is I click the price I want on the level two box. The left is the bid, the right is the ask. If I want to short the bid, I hit the bid and then I hit the short button. That to me saves me so much more time than fumbling around and doing 500 shares, 322 short. Yep. That to me, style. that time that you waste right there is the difference of making money on a trade or not making money on a trade. So these little tips and tricks, maybe they sound simple. Maybe you guys already know it, but this is the shit that you learn while you're doing it every single day, how to be faster, how to be better. And honestly, Bao's idea is the better version, but I just don't have the fucking screen real estate for it. But that's, it's different, right? We all do different things based on our personality. Bao likes to 
just like he likes to trade five different stocks at the same time, he has five different level twos open at the same time. You can see his personality. Me, I'm a little bit more different. I need it simplified. I need it easier. So I just click the button and do it like that. So these yep. little things, these little tips and tricks on DAS, like shit, man, they might be all the difference. So take notes, guys. Try to remember these things that are going to help you. Yeah, you and if you guys are, you know, if you guys size. are, let me say, let so, me say this. If you guys are, you know, asking this question because you're trading on something that's only like E-Trade or TD Ameritrade Mobile, yeah, dude, it's going to be way too hard with limit orders, man. You got to get a professional-ass platform. I'm just going to like up arrow the living shit out of Val's <laughs> comment there. Just give me a second. Just like, hold <laughs> what did he say? Whoa, whoa, Robin Hood, Oliver, really? Not going to do that. Delete. <laughs> God. Oh, man. Uh, what commission-free broker do you suggest for day trading? We don't suggest commission-free brokers because they sell your orders uh, and you will lose out on good fills. That's why we only recommend Cobra and Venom. And if you are an MIC member, MIC member you will get a discount on commissions if you reach out to them. Best brokerage for shorting stocks other than Trade Zero, Cobra. Cobra, baby. What is the difference between re entering a stock that is taking you out after calming down? Okay, you've, re you've exited and now you've calmed down and you're ready to re enter and reassessing the trade versus a FOMO trade. How do you differentiate between the two? How do you know when you're emotional? You could usually tell, man, like if you, it's, it's kind of funny, but like if we just keep it really simple, uh, what Brett told me in the past is that if you feel yourself being stressed in the trade, that you are in the wrong trade. And the oftentimes that you could see that your stress is you're like, okay, I'm not following my plan. My plan was to short at $5. It's at $5 and 30 cents and it looks weak. I'm just not going to follow my plan. Are you following your plan? Do you feel yourself having a little bit more anxiety than usual? Trading should be boring. You should be sitting there and being bored, right? If you are trying to look for action, chances are you're probably in the wrong trade. So is your kind of heart rate going faster? Are you, are you deviating? Do you feel weird? You could usually tell you feel, you feel some type of way, you know? Feel some type Alex, of let, way. Me, let me say it like this, man. Dude, I was having a really hard time with SVET today because he was so goddamn slow, dude. But guess what? I had a plan at 160 and 168 for an ad. Dude, it took a while, but I, I walked away. I had orders set, dude. So you have to have your fantasy set. But the point is, guys, is that's the whole point. So when you're breaking your plan, that's when you're in the wrong, man. That's when you're wrong. I follow my pre-plan, bro, the 160 line. And Alex was saying it. We were calling out in chat, 160, look what happened. But the point is, man, is like Alex said, dude, the minute you deviate from your original plan or unless you're waiting for like a reactionary trade, like you're waiting for a death candle and then you short, that's different. That's a reactionary quick trade. But unless it's pre-planned and you're breaking your, 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 your pre-plan, dude, you're doomed. You're doomed because you're probably going to make money on something you don't know why you made money or instill bad habits. SPET was a great example today. You just had to do your original plan. If you got in here because you're impatient, you're already getting squeezed. Perfect. Do, I access, do members have access to Brett Steinbarger or some professional like him? Uh, no. And if you did, it would not be $197 a month for access to MIC. <laughs> It's one ninety seven uh, a minute for him, bro. Yeah, <laughs> bro, that's like that's like caviar on the Toro sushi. Like, <laughs> uh, just got on light speed. What do you guys think of light speed? Decent, decent. I can't make a comment on light speed. I've never used light speed. Me neither. Me either. No yeah. idea. Um, so we use cho we choose Cobra, and, and so the reason it, why we choose Cobra, just so that people know, is number one is you get free locates from time to time, right? You get great customer service, great feedback. Uh, you get great platform, great commissions, and members get 25% off their fees. So, I mean, essentially, with the 25% that you save, that is your monthly membership for MIC. Yep. Boom, there you go. And you're not going to have to pay for a freaking scanner. Dude, we take care of you in every way possible. Here's the best question right here. The question that Tosh also loves. 
Oh, God. Data shows that only 10% of traders are profitable. Why do you believe 90% fail? Oh, this is... Don't uh, get me started. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. I'll, I'll well, keep it it's short. Two forty. Right? It's three forty-five right now, so we should finish up in about fifteen minutes with this question. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I'll start. I'll start by saying, man, the reason why you're not profitable, bro, is because of ego or anybody. I'm not. Spe I'm not singling out one person, but the only reason why I struggled for two years in my beginning is because I did not seek out help, man. I tried to do everything alone. I had an ego. And then after that, for a half a year, I said, fuck this. I'm still not joining anybody because you know what? I've been in this two years. The market deserves me money. I've given two years of my life. Guess what? You can give the market 20 years of your life. If you're doing the wrong shit, you will lose money for a lifetime. So dude, it's like 97% of traders lose money. That 90% that ninety is a wrong number, I'm telling you right now. I see most of the questions on Twitter of people being like, dude, I don't need MIC, man. I, yeah, I'm, I got a $90,000 account, but I'm gonna trade it by myself. Dude, and then he loses 20,000 the next day and he could have paid for everyone's annual membership. The point is, man, is eliminate ego, ask for help. Asking for help when you need it is not a weakness, it's a strength. Yep. People do 100%. not get the right education. Also, the 90% that fail could have, you know, they could, they, just like anybody, it's not that any question is bad or any question is, is, is a good question. They're, all questions are good questions. If you're asking questions, you're doing the right thing. The bad thing is if you've been, here, been around for three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 months and you haven't asked any questions, you're just sitting back there with your dick in your hand and a thumb up your ass like somebody's going to reach around for you. I mean, <laughs> man, it sounds like a good dude, day. That doesn't just come with like, the monthly, Joe. That doesn't come with the monthly? No, it doesn't come with the monthly. Yeah. That, no, that comes That's an a la carte <laughs> option of the menu. Yes. A la carte <laughs> option. <laughs> dude, it's the questions. People that ask questions are some of the best members that we have. The reason being is because somebody else is probably thinking of asking that same question and may not want to ask that question. It doesn't matter whether the question is, has an obvious answer. It only matters in education. It only matters that they're there asking the question, they're in the moment and they're participating. They're making a conscious effort to better themselves. Oh yes, Netflix, thank you, Jesus. I might have to make a call real quick. Oh. Tell COVID to sell some of my position. There you I go, had to, Joe. I had to close down my trading platform because I had way too many windows open and my memory on my computer was like way bogged down. <laughs> and <laughs> so I've just been watching it. Dude, sell Netflix and chill as Bow says. <laughs> yep. Any other questions, guys? Uh, let's see. Dude, that is and let so me just kind of answer that 90% thing one more time. Yeah, yeah, you can chime in on that. The too, reason yeah. why 90% of traders fail is because realistically, it's just that truth. They are lazy and they really just don't care. Like, it's like, to me, it actually blows my mind how much people don't even watch the videos or don't even pay attention to the content that we put out. Uh, most of the time, these guys just don't really, they, they join and they start opening up an account and just buying random shit or shorting random shit. And the problem is lack of education, man. It's, it's really just that simple. It's that people don't want to spend the week, two weeks, month to learn because they are so like excited for a trade. They cannot wait to trade. They are so ready to buy a Lambo or all these other things. But the truth of the matter is, is that uh, the more time that you focus on education, the faster you will make money. So people do it the inverse. They focus on trying to make money first and then learning and they lose. Those that come in, that put in the work, that watch the videos, ask questions, attend the webinars, um, do everything in their power to give them the most edge, usually, believe it or not, end up finding success. You know, go yes. figure. The reason why, you know, Bao is so successful is because you could tell he puts in the work. The guy's here 24 fucking seven trading until the bell rings. Right. And then and he's he in after hours. Yeah. The guy is here every single day. Right. People don't see the work that Joe puts behind the scenes that I put behind the scenes that Tosh puts behind the scenes. It's videos and videos and videos and videos. And even after six years, I am still improving. So 
how could someone with you know six days or six months experience expect to know it all you have to drop your ego you have to admit that you are not an expert and that there's always someone better than you and hey man if i want to get into basketball and michael jordan is going to be there to teach me i would rather go there right i want to go somewhere where there is successful people surrounded by success because it's just like your friends. You are who you surround yourself with. If all your friends are alcoholics and potheads, you are going to be an alcoholic and a pothead. Yeah. If all of your friends are business owners and people that aspire to become better and always looking to help each other, you know what? You are going to become that as well. So always look to surround yourself with people that you know are smarter than you, that are better than you. Because I always want to be the quiet guy in the room. I always want to be the guy listening because I know that a lot of guys have a lot more experience than me and experience is what separates everything in this world. Yeah. So let me ask you guys a question, you know, that's really important. And I want you to think about this. If you lost $197 today or maybe bigger accounts, you lost 2000 today and you don't know why, do you realize you just gave up on learning why? with a, either a month membership at One MIC full or... month of education is Dude. what that is, guys. One full month. When I went to college, my college was one of the cheaper schools and I had to pay $20,000 a year for one of the cheaper schools for college, right? Yep. And here we are offering something that is a tenth of the price that to me is more fun and more educational and provides more freedom, yet people don't really want to put in the work. You know, if you want to be a doctor, make it 500 grand a year, Go to school for 10 years. You want to be a trader that makes 500 grand, maybe go to trading school for two years. And that's the thing that people don't correlate it to. This is hard work, guys. This is a business. There's no way that you're going to be making a million dollars a year in something that is easy. So give yourself the best chance of success. Dude, I love that. Well said. <laughs> what goes, I'm still, I, Fadi, I'm reading your YouTube comments, bro. And I, I'm, or, or gal, sorry. I always call everybody bro. Uh, I'm just having a hard time understanding what the question is. I'll read them both to you guys and see if you understand what it is. Um, what goes in a day of trading from at what time? I think he means like, what is the daily process maybe? Yeah, probably. Okay. I mean, we have so many videos on this guys. It just goes back to the same thing. It's like, you could type in Tosh. If you even go to the video library and type in process, Bao has a video in the trading fish Academy that is called uh, the daily trading process explained. I think that's what it's called. Um, and guys, it's funny because I'm the one that uploads all the videos to the MIC YouTube channel and video library. And I watch all the videos before you guys. So the person that you see is doing all this stuff, daily trading, improving this and that is the guy that's watching every single video when it comes out because I'm the one that's looking at it. So there's no coincidence that the reason why I say that the videos are where all the gold is because that is where I am learning as well. Every single day I see every single video before it goes out, every single one of them. And that's why I am here. And that's why I'm trying to tell you that that is the secret. Beautiful. You guys got to ask for help, man. If you need help, you got to invest in your education. And then once you do, man, don't be shy. You got to ask us for help. This stuff can be uh, learned, man. Let's see. I already answered that question, that question, that question, that question, that question. Okay, YouTube questions are caught up. All right. I think that's it, guys. I think that's uh, cut. I think that's it. Let's do it. Let's end that's it with she covering this Hertz trade for 10 cents. Let's see. What's <laughs> money? What's, what's the yeah, money? where's Bao at? Where, <laughs> where is, is that? Let me take 20, what, 28? I bet Bao filled 28. Oh, no, get your Sorry, done. Yeah, he, he got a 137 starter. Yeah. Wait for get it. Get your dime, bro. He was get 125. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, there's six minutes left, man. <laughs> He's insane, dude. He's insane. <laughs> All right, let me get off this mic and kick Bow's ass. Thanks for having me. <laughs> See you, Alex. Later, bro. Joe, this was awesome, man. This was a really good lesson this week. Guys, thank you so always, much for showing man. up, man. As always, I can't wait until next week, man. I hope Alex decides he wants to come back on next week. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Joe, this is great, dude. Into a podcast. Bro, go get, some, go get some brisket or something, man. Yeah, yeah. On this meat shortage, have you, dude, do you even know how much a brisket costs right now? It ain't even funny.
Meat shortage? Is there a meat shortage? Yeah. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Shit. You eat you eat eggplants. <laughs> yeah, sorry, bro. I'm living on lettuce. You I'm like living a rabbit. on rabbit food, man. You live like a rabbit. <laughs> you wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no, I'm living. A, yeah, I'm living at juice. Yeah, it's a meat shortage. I'm living at juiceries and eating yeah. freaking <laughs> celery, man. Tosh is like meat shortage. She's never said that. <laughs> I was literally just gonna say, bro, I got all the meat. What are you talking about? <laughs> nice trade, right, bro. bro. Nice trade. Look at this scalp he just did, dude. What a way to end the day. Just outer lines, man. Just outer lines. It's all part of the process. Nice Good job, Bow. Guys, yep. Texas, if you have any questions, again, the Accelerator course, if you want access today, um, I can hook you up. Uh, text 213-458-5997, not just the Accelerator course. If you need help with um, any kind of questions as it relates to joining the club, what to expect, if this didn't answer all your questions, what I can do for you, um, reach out to me, guys. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to get you in. And then, uh, dude, come join the family, man. It's just too much fun, man. All right, guys, without further ado, Joe, later. Alex, Adios. awesome to have you, and let's do it again next week, guys. Later, bro.